Well, today has been a very strange day in the Dragon Ball fandom. About six hours ago, the official poster for the new Dragon Ball Super movie leaked, and while some people were initially skeptical, mostly out of a mix of disbelief and strong desire for it to be fake, it has been confirmed by Toei to be real. The new movie is called Dragon Ball Super Broly, and it will indeed focus on said character. Oh boy. Before we dive in, we do have a comment from Akira Toriyama that I think is very, very important to the discussion here. He says, Everyone, are you familiar with Broly? He's an incredibly strong Saiyan. He only appeared in the old anime movies, and I apparently at least drew the designs for him, but I had practically no involvement with the anime at the time, so I had totally forgotten about the story content. So, about Broly. I hear these days he's still very popular, not only in Japan, but also overseas. Based on that, my editor suggested we have Broly Broly appear in this next movie. I went ahead and watched the movies from back then, and I felt that this could be quite interesting once I rearranged some things. I got right to work trying my hand at a story that incorporates him into the Dragon Ball Super series. While keeping in mind Broly's classic image so as not to disappoint fans, I updated him and added a new side to his character, and I think this has resulted in a more fascinating Broly. Naturally, you'll get to see fierce combat, but also the paths of destiny that lead to an encounter between Goku, Vegeta, and Broly. It also involves the Frieza Force and the history of the Saiyans, which end up having a major connection to everything. The story content turns out to be very large-scale and dramatic. Here comes that almighty Saiyan Broly. I'm also including lots of other content that all you fans will enjoy, so please look forward to it and be patient a little while longer for it to all come together. There is a lot to unpack here, so first of all, yes, Toriyama did in fact design Broly once upon a time, but as far as personality, the writing, the events and whatnot, they were handled by Takao Koyama, who also wrote every single Z movie, as well as the Bardock special. Broly is, for all intents and purposes, not Toriyama's character. As a result, my first reaction upon seeing this news was, what the hell? Do they really bring back Broly for the film that seems to be new in the vast majority of areas? That feels like such a boot to the face after it feeling like the film that was being made for me. We got ourselves a brand new character designer, now Hiro Shintani, who totally overhauled Dragon Ball's declining style into something that looks absolutely fantastic. We got ourselves a competent director in the form of Tatsuya Nagamine. I could not for the life of me understand why you would refresh everything in a positive direction, only to then waste that on rehashing an old character. And then I calmed down, and I started to think about possibilities. As you guys know, I hated Kale and everything Broly-esque about her in Dragon Ball Super. It felt dishonest in its existence. The Dragon Ball editors acknowledged Broly's popularity and then tried to sneak him into Super with this new female skin. That really rubbed me the wrong way, that felt insulting. The thing is, in spite of what people think because of my reaction to Kale, I don't actually hate Broly as a concept. His design is cool, he's this unwavering, intimidating presence, it's just he doesn't really have a personality, and his films began to get less and less interesting as they went on. He didn't feel like a villain from the pen of Akira Toriyama. So this announcement here kind of quells a lot of my issues from the get-go. Firstly, I just appreciate that we're not beating around the bush anymore. We have Broly, it is Broly, there is no thinly veiled attempt at pretending it's not Broly or that it's something more. Super jumped the shark long ago, so if we're just going to go full fan service, then fine. Just be honest that that is what is happening, and that is what they're doing. Secondly, Toriyama didn't remember anything about the initial films, and he sat here saying that he's given Broly new aspects, and the result is now, quote, fascinating. For me, that's the big saving grace of this news. The notion of Toriyama taking an okay concept and putting his own spin on things is great, and I'm so okay with that. I remember the idea of an evil Goku on paper sounding horrendous, and yet Toriyama came in and made it his own, and we ended up with Super's most memorable villain by an absolute mile. If this film is wiping the slate clean, taking the concept of Broly, and then writing essentially a new character and a new story into this mainline super narrative, then I am all for going in with an open mind. There were no comparisons in Super of Kale to Broly by the characters, so I would guess that that's the idea here. I think it would be very strange and uncomfortable for them to acknowledge that they've met this character before. I think that type of strange continuation would really ruin things for me. Toriyama mentions that he was conscious of Broly's past image, so I kind of hope that that just refers to like the overall intimidation factor more than anything else. I don't think I really want a character who barely speaks again, especially after an entire arc of Jiren. At the very least, we know this film explores the history of the Saiyans, there are ties to the Frieza army, multiple storylines going on, already it does sound a lot more interesting than any of the previous Broly films. 
At the same time, I'm still kind of on the fence about the idea. Not only, as I said, does it feel at odds with the overhauled staff, but it's continuing this trend of shrinking Dragon Ball's world. Battle of Gods opened the mother load of possibilities with its new hierarchy of gods, all these different universes and possible foes out there. And then the next movie brought things back around to Freezer. Then we opened things up again with the Universe 6 tournament and the idea of the Universe 6 Saiyan planet, and then shrunk things again by bringing back future Trunks. Then we had another tournament that expanded things again, and then we neatly wrapped things up and shoved them to the side, and now Broly is back. It's like every springboard to new, exciting worlds and characters is crushed under this editorial department's desire to cash in on nostalgia. It's not that nostalgia is necessarily all bad. After all, I said the future Trunks arc is mostly great, and this film could be absolutely great, but it's very hard for me to cast aside that feeling that Dragon Ball doesn't want to grow. It wants to be safe and keep doing what it's doing and that's so frustrating because almost everything that's new so far, while not necessarily always perfect, feels like an opening onto bigger and better things. So that's where I am narratively. I think there's a strong possibility that with the great staff on board, this will be one of the most entertaining films around and Toriyama could absolutely make Broly an interesting character, but I kind of wish we were doing something new. Anyway, I know why you guys are subscribed and we do have a brand new poster to break down alongside some new staff announcements. Firstly, let me just say, holy crap is this poster nice, it is extremely refreshing after Resurrection F and the various super posters that kind of looked like individual renders slapped on a page. This actually has some semblance of composition and art direction. The intimidating greens at the bottoms, the blues against the fiery reds in the background, this is pretty nicely put together, though you can see on the website that it's still individual components arranged, which is definitely a far cry away from the full illustrations of old. That is a nitpick though, on the whole I would be absolutely fine having this up my wall. Looking at individual character art, let's kick things off with the close-up at the bottom. I know a lot of people who aren't fully sold on Shintani have been worried that this softer approach would somehow mean less intimidating looking characters, and I hope this puts things to rest. This is such a great twist on the old school direction. Intense curved eyes are back and they're surrounded by this array of frown lines. What strikes me the most is the deep shading on the eyes with the distinctive highlights. That's that modern twist I'm talking about, you just don't see that in Dragon Ball, but it's incredibly effective. You can likewise get a better look at the inky, almost analog looking lines that we saw in the initial movie teaser. There's clearly this very strong desire to avoid the very processed and clean looking visual style that Dragon Ball's had for the past two decades. They want grit, they want texture, and that is plain to see. Moving up the page, let's touch on Goku and Vegeta. The first thing that caught my eye and got me very excited is just how soft Goku's gi is drawn. We are so used to harsh angles and stiff looking fabric in Dragon Ball. It's only really now Kitate who tends to stray away from that in favor of the approach we're seeing here. Each fold has a curvature to it and the shading likewise matches that there are actually some subtle highlights here which is refreshing and clearly supposed to reflect the aura around them. Coming from designs that like to use highlights whether it was daytime, nighttime, aura, no aura, it's very nice to see highlights actually make sense again. Looking at both Goku and Vegeta's faces, these are very much in line with what we've seen from Shintani so far in the design sheets. Pointy noses, curved eyes and eyebrows, nicely proportioned jaws and slim old school faces. We've got indented cheek shading on Vegeta, the old school cheek dimple makes a return too. Lastly, the hair is much like the clothing, it is a lovely mixture of curves with subtle highlights. Lego hair is dead, long live the fluffy pillows, and of course anyone who was afraid of the extra Super Saiyan blue bang being forgotten has nothing to worry about. It is back and apparently it sticks up this time, probably due to the force of the aura. The last thing on the page is of course Broly in the background looking a little more battle scarred than usual. We can't see too much, but it mostly seems to reflect the design sensibilities found in the rest of the image. The muscles are large but loosely defined find, but it's the shading that I think is really worth touching on. Like I said, the limelight is very much trying to give the impression that this isn't a digital production, and that's extended to the shading. If you look carefully, you can see that the outline of the shading is slightly lighter than the colour that fills it. The reason they've done this is to emulate how cells look. If you take a close look at old shows, you can see this effect all over the place. It was obviously never intentional back then, but it was part of that aesthetic, and that is very much what's being channeled here. And as a last dash of old school, Earlobes are back. Hooray for earlobes. 
Like I said earlier in the video, we did get some staff confirmations. Fans of Norihito Sumitomo's score will be very happy to see him return once again to compose for this movie. In the color design spot, we have Rumiko Nagai, who was responsible for picking out the colors in One Piece Film Gold and Toei's most recent major movie, Pop in Q. We can thank her for the absolutely gorgeous colors that are all over this movie. In less exciting news, the CG director is Kai Makino, who was also the CG director for Resurrection F. That is quite worrying. Resurrection F CG was very, very poor, and Nagamine is pretty well known for liking a bit of CG here and there. I hope since this film's schedule is so good and that Nagamine is such a stickler for details that whatever we get isn't too obtrusive. Lastly, the production manager is Tetsuo Inagaki. Production managers are pretty much responsible for making sure everything's running smoothly, the scheduling, logistics and whatnot. He worked with Nagamine on Film Z and he was also lead on Tiger Mask W, which was a very nicely animated series. He's clearly good at what he does, has a working relationship with Nagamine, so that is another smooth cog in the machine. Visually, everything is still on track for this to be the best looking Dragon Ball project in decades. Now it's really just down to whether Toriyama can deliver a script that lives up to the quality of the production around it. Like I said, I have an open mind for now. If anyone can make Broly interesting, it is Toriyama. I would much rather we be doing something else, but that is clearly not an option, so fingers crossed this all comes together in the end. We have a trailer coming at Comic-Con somewhere around the 19th or 20th of this month, so it won't be long before we get a little taste of what this movie is going to be like. But that is all for now. What a crazy day it has been. We have just unpacked so much in such a short space of time. Broly was trending on Twitter earlier, so clearly you guys have a lot to say. I would like to invite you to just word vomit all over the comment section with your thoughts, excitement, disappointment, whatever you want, I want to hear it. As always, be sure to rate the video, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you next time. I cannot believe they brought Broly back.